All right, so somebody some time ago suggested that I do a test between my new, at the time, blue ESR tester and my old ESR tester, the MUL3333 that really is not available anymore, the analog tester. And then I thought we'd go ahead and use the MK168 transistor tester and we'll go ahead and test each and every one of these capacitors and just see what the differences are between the different testers. So I'll start a log, I'll test each one, I'll make a note of it and we'll compare the results when it's all over. Okay, so all in all, I have 15 different capacitors to test. These have all been pulled out of units. Some of them may actually be good. Most of them I think we'll find are bad. So I've made a little tally sheet. I'm gonna keep note of the blue ESR test, the MUL3333 analog meter test, and the MK168 test. And we'll see how close they are at the end of the video. But before I do anything, I'm gonna go ahead and just test resistance values on the three meters and just see how close they actually are with a couple of fixed value resistors. So I have the two alignment resistors. They're fairly high accuracy resistors that came with the blue ESR tester to do the alignment. So one is an 82 ohm and I expect to see about 82 ohms. I see 81.9 just teetering on 82. And the second one is a 5.6 ohm I expect to see about 5.7 or 5.8 with the lead resistance. So if I short my leads together, I see 0.01. So absolutely perfect, 5.7 ohms for a 5.6 ohm resistor. So first we'll go ahead and test the lead integrity, zero out the blue ESR meter, then we'll test the two resistors and see what kind of value we get. Then we'll do the same thing to the MUL3333 and the MK168 and see what the results are. Okay, here we go, blue ESR meter on, short the leads and we'll zero it out. So first one should be 82 ohms. And I'm seeing 80, 81, that's pretty darn close. And we should see about 5.6 on this one. And we see exactly 5.6. So next we'll do the same test with the MUL3333, the analog tester. Now for accuracy on this one, I just have a couple of short leads with alligator clips. And I'm right at zero ohms, perfectly happy with that. First, we'll test the 82 ohm resistor. We should be just over 100 and somewhere below 50. Oh, and look at that, we're over 100 ohms. Terrible accuracy. Now the 5.6, this should be pretty clear. Should be just above the six and below the five. Oh, and it's reading eight and a half ohms. Absolutely terrible accuracy. Next, let's move on to the MK168 and see how it reads. So let's just go ahead and short the leads together and see what we get on this one. 0.05 ohms, pretty doggone close. Now we'll go ahead and test the 82 ohm resistor first. I see 81.8, man, this thing is spot on. Next, we'll move to the 5.6. And I see 5.68, very, very, very close. I'm really happy with those results. Okay, now on to the blue ESR meter, cap number one, which is a Suscon 100 at 100 volts. And I see 0.14 ohms. Number two, the same value, 100 at 100, and I see 2.0 ohms on that one. On to number three, another Suscon, 100 at 100 again, and I see 7.9 ohms on that one. On to the 4700 at 6.3, this is an intercon capacitor. I see 0 0.03 ohms on that one. Next is a Samwa, a 470 at 16 volts. 0.34 ohms on that guy. Now on to another Samwa. This one is a 100 at 50 volts. And I see 4.6, 4.7 ohms. I'll just call it 4.7. Now the last of these three Samwas, I think there's another Samwa down here somewhere. This is a 47 at 50 volts. And I see 7.4 ohms on that one. Now I've got four of these Nichicons. They're all 22 microfarad at 35 volts. Absolutely no reading on that one whatsoever. Nothing on that one as well. Won't even read it. And absolutely open on that one. So those are all gonna be dashes. Now I've got another Samwa. This one is a one microfarad 50 volt capacitor. This is number 12. And I read 37 ohms on that one. And yet another Samwa. This one is a 10 at 50 volts. And I get nothing. Let's verify lead integrity real quick. Yep. And I see nothing on that one. So that will be a dash as well on the paper. Next to last, a Chong, 22 at 50. Call these ChinaCon caps, 1.5 ohms. 
And last, I'm sure but not least, is a very vintage Matsushita capacitor, a 10 at 25 volts. I believe this one came out of a stereo receiver from the 70s, maybe even early 80s. And I see 2.3 ohms on that one. All right, let's move on to the MUL3333, the old analog meter you've seen me use so many times. All right, once again, we'll verify lead integrity. I'll make sure we're right at absolute zero on this guy, just to get the most accurate reading. And we'll start once again with the Suscon 100 at 100 volts. And wow, I'm seeing like maybe 0.1 ohms. Number two, Suscon, same value, 100 at 100. And I'm seeing about 2.6 ohms. The next Suscon, another 100 at 100. Remember lead polarity is not important on these because it's not actually putting any voltage into the capacitor. I just got to keep the leads from touching. That one I'm seeing probably 11 ohms. And on to the 4700 microfarad 6.3 intercon. And I'm basically seeing zero. I can't read that low of a value. Number five is going to be the Samwa 470 at 16 volts. And I'm seeing about probably 0.35 ohms. Next is the Samwa 100 at 50 volts. Now that one I'm seeing exactly six and a half ohms. Now for the Samwa 47 at 50. And this one I'm seeing about 12 ohms, I would say. On to the four caps that would not even read on the blue ESR meter. And they will not even read on this one. Pretty sure they're all four going to be the same. Yep, everyone exactly the same. Will not even move the needle whatsoever. On to the Samwa 1 at 50. And this one reads about 75 ohms. On to the Samwa 10 at 50. I don't see any needle deflection whatsoever. Next to last, the Chong 22 at 50. And I'm seeing about 1.8 ohms. And absolutely last, the Matsushita Panasonic capacitor, right at three ohms exactly. All right, on to the MK168 next. All right, here we go. First, Suscon 100 at 100, 99.1 microfarads, ESR of 0.19 and a V loss of 1%. On to the second, Suscon. 68 microfarads, ESR 2.4, and a V-loss of 6.9%. Okay, on to the third, Suscon 100 at 100. Wow, it reads 32 picofarads. The other ones were reading 7.9 and 11 ohms. Number four, the 4700 at 6.3 volts. 5700 microfarads, an ESR of 0.06, and a V-loss 2.6%. On to the Samwa, 470 at 16 volts, 353 microfarads, ESR of 0.47 ohms, and a V-loss of 7.6%. On to the 100 at 50 Samwa, 88 microfarads, 5.6 ohms, and a V-loss of 2%. Now on to the Samwa 47 at 50, and we see 50 microfarads, 7.8 ohms, and 1.8% VLOS. All right, now on to the Nichicon that neither other tester would even test. Wow, 123 microfarads, ESR of, wow, 0.14K. 140 ohms and a V loss of 34%. On to the second Nichicon that I could not test on the other tester. 287 picofarad, that's all it will show me. It has definitely flown south for the winter. On to the next untestable Nichicon, 237 picofarad. And the last untestable Nichicon, 53 microfarads. ESR of 0.14K once again, and a V-loss of 19%. Absolutely terrible, 140 ohm ESR, worthless. On to the Samwa, one at 50. Well, 990 nanofarads, which is just shy of one microfarad. ESR of 46 ohms, and a V-loss 3.2%. 
Now on to the Samoa 10 at 50. Couldn't even test this on either other unit. Wow, 18.98, so let's just call that 19. 19 microfarads. Once again, an ESR of 0.14K or 140 ohms. V loss, 12%. Next to last, the Chong, the China Con cap. Where's Cheech? Okay, 23 microfarads, ESR of 1.9 ohms, and a V loss of 2.7%. In all fairness, I have to tell you that this capacitor was hooked up backwards, but it still tests pretty good. And least but not last, or last but not least, I'm not sure which one. That one just simply reads 52 ohms. No, the leads are not touching. It just reads 52 ohms. I think I pulled this out of a stereo receiver because it had a high DC bias on one channel. And this was the culprit, it was leaky. So the only tester that actually found this was the MK168. Just for the heck of it, let's test it one more time. Yeah, 52 ohms. Okay, well, let's test that last cap with the Fluke. See what kind of resistance we read on it. And I read 51.9 ohms. Pretty doggone close. Well, the results are in. I would have to say the MK168 is a fine transistor capacitor inductor diode tester for, I think I paid around $25 for it on eBay. Does a very accurate job, especially comparing it to the blue ESR meter that was almost $100. The MUL3333, well, it's an okay tester. It'll get you kind of in the ballpark, yes or no. And the blue ESR meter, it is by far the fastest to test capacitors with. This thing is lightning fast. You just put it on the capacitor and it gives you the value in or out of circuit. The MUL3333, a little bit slower. You have to wait for the needle to stabilize before you get a semi-accurate reading. But as you can tell, most of the readings were low, especially on the resistance values. Almost every other capacitor read low. I'm not sure if the manufacturer had a uh, linearity problem with the meter face. They probably could have corrected that with a little bit of uh, Printing fix, I'm not quite sure, but as you can see, uh, a lot of them that read 37 ohms here, uh, read 46 here and 75 ohms there, 7.4, 12 ohms here, 7.8, pretty doggone close. Almost everything read high, and once you get down this low, it's extremely hard to tell what the value is, especially like this one, 0 0.03, the MK168 read 0 0.06. Anyhow, that's it. Somebody asked me to do a comparison of the three meters, and I actually did the comparison. So we've certainly got the MUL3333 right there. We've got the MK168, and we've got the blue ESR tester. And then here are all the capacitors that got tested. So that is it, the tests of the various capacitor testers. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video on testing these testers. I know I had a fun time making it. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me. NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.